Hey guys, Private Jack here and welcome to part 3 of my tutorial series on how to convert XNA models into Source Film Maker type models so that you can use them in Source Film Maker and have fun with them. Also opens up a whole new avenue of what we can use Source Film Maker for. Okay, in part 1 we talked about the programs you needed, showed you where to go and get them. Uh, part two, we installed those programs, and now in part three, we're going to talk about XNA LoRa a little bit. XNA LoRa is a uh, posing program. It uses a specific type of model, and when you open it up and load the models into them, uh, into it, it uh, allows you to put them into various poses. You can have more than one model. You can bring in a background and put things together and make uh, your pictures pop out a little bit with actually having 3D anim or uh, 3D characters in it. It also provides you the ability to do some limited uh, animation, but uh, it is a poser program. Uh, whether or not there's other variants out there for it, uh, for the model use and something like a source filmmaker, I don't know. Basically what it was, was there were a few models that I wanted to get a hold of for use in source filmmaker and I researched on how to actually do this process. So without further ado, uh, we put XNA LoRa on our desktop okay right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this folder now and I'm going to launch the program now I may end up with a little bit of a error here and yes okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the config file I don't know why this is doing this to me but uh, this is the first time I actually uh, used it on this computer so works fine on my laptop for some strange reason and that's weird so I've deleted the config file and now I'm going to launch LoRa and this is basically what it looks like you get a little uh, window here with a ground floor on it and a control window up here and this is where you actually do your posing of the model now, okay, <clears throat> let's talk about the models. I've downloaded uh, four models here, and I'll show you how to get them into it, but first let's talk about models. Where can you get them, and what basically is available? Well, if you do a quick search on Google, and I have to configure that so it doesn't stay on top all the time, and let's say I just want to do XNA LoRa model downloads. What you're going to find is that most of the model contents for XNA LoRa resides in DeviantArt. Okay, it's a really good site for art and this type of model. They also have some source filmmaker models in DeviantArt. It's getting more popular there. So if you're looking for a resource, this is one of the places you need to go to actually look for something. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to DeviantArt. We're going to go into the gallery. <clears throat> and here are, is an example of what models are available. So a lot of uh, character type models. Uh, there's 138 pages of models for uh, XNA LoRa. Let's just go back here to the gallery here. And basically these are the type of characters that are available. So there's character downloads, there's uh, all kinds of weird and other stuff, uh, items to download, animals, and monsters, scenery downloads, weapons, vehicles, and there's also a work in progress place. Go to the next page. Uh, tutorials, and if you want to get into using um, these models in uh, XNA LoRa, and of course the 3D 
art folder where people have made various scenes and done things with uh, the program. So let's go back here and you can search for this stuff. I'm just not sure how. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to oh characters. I'm going to click on more and it'll bring up how many pages? 138 pages of characters. Well, I'm not going to go through and get some. You guys can research this stuff on your own and just to see what's in there. All kinds of stuff. But I've downloaded uh, about three or four models that I'm going to use in this particular series. And the one that we're going to pay attention to is Wreck-It Ralph. Kind of like that character. I've got a zombie pony here, and I've got, uh, well, let's just get this stuff in, and you can see what I've got. So the first character we're going to put into play is Wreck-It Ralph. And the way that you get this stuff into XNA Laura is you have to extract the model contents into the um, data folder in XNA Laura. So what I did was I went in here and data and what I'm going to do is come back into my RAR file, go back up to the root directory and I'm just going to pull the Wreck-It Ralph folder into here. And I'm going to do it for the other ones as well. My zombie pony. This guy. And this girl. Okay, so these guys now reside in my data folder under the XNA Laura XPS folder. Exit out of that. Pull up my control window. In here in the options, I'm going to turn off always on top so that if I go into another screen, the control window falls in behind it. Otherwise, it stays on top. Now, to load a model, what you do is you come here to File and Add Model. And let's grab wreck -It Ralph. And there's wreck -It Ralph. Now he's a 3D character and he's fully posable and the way you pose him in Laura is by selecting the part that you want to move and start moving sliders. Okay and they only go so far. It's more or less a 180 degree circle. If you want to reset it all you have to do is click on the zeros here and it resets. The height button puts them above, below, or on the floor, and basically zero is at floor level. Holding down the shift keys, I can move around. Or, sorry, the, the mouse buttons. I'm holding down both mouse buttons right now to move around like this. Holding down the left mouse button to pivot, and holding down the right mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. You can add lights, you can add all the rest of that good stuff, but that's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial. I'm going to add uh, my other guys here to the scene. He's in behind. What I want to do is uh, to move him, what you have to do is you have to actually position him. So I'm going to bring him to forward or two to the left rather and there's my Mars attacks alien bring in another model okay I'm gonna move her two to the right so it's a negative value there she is and I think that's all I'm going to do now one of the things that I can do now is I can actually take and I can, uh, let's see, options, set a background, 
image. Go to my desktop again. Get up here. Oops. No, I don't want to do that. And picture of my camper. There it is. Going to where's my control panel? Get rid of the floor. And now what I can do is I can move things around and put them on in various poses and whatnot else. And you can see that the shadows will actually reflect up onto the background the way they're supposed to, yada 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 that that kind of thing there. So I'm going to get out of this right now. What we're interested in actually getting these models into a format that we can bring into Blender. So that's just basically what you can do with this. And if I look at this, bring up my control panel again. I move him backwards. That's back. Minus five. There, I put him back further into the picture. I can actually get him to scale down to the point that I need him to be to be in line with the mo uh, with the the motorhome. So. Yeah, like I say, that's X and A lore in a nutshell, but this is not what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this character. Yep, goodbye alien. I'm going to get rid of the Navio female. Move. Goodbye lady. Get rid of my background. Actually, it doesn't really matter, but I do want to see the floor. Spray it around. Okay. So now I'm going to zoom out. And what I have is Wreck It Ralph Black. Okay, so inside the model there are bones already. You have the option of exporting this three ways. If I go File, Export as an object, okay, as an object file, this will export Ralph. He will not have any textures. He will not have any bones. It'll be his base mesh only. Uh, basically, if you want to uh, bone the character yourself and do that, that's one option that you have. The other one, uh, the other two options are: is if I posed Ralph into a pose by moving his arms and whatnot else, I can export him as a mesh ASCII file in a posed position, or I can put him into a T-pose. What a T-pose is what he is in right now. He is T-posed, and this is a basic model uh, pose for uh, creating models, skinning them, and getting them ready for animation. And this is the pose that I want him to be in. So I'm going to come back into my control panel and I'm going to expo uh, select that model and I'm going to export him in a T pose. Okay, so I'm going to create, uh, I created a folder on my desktop. It's XNA to SMD. And basically, this is where I'm going to do all my work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to create a new folder. 
and I'm going to call it Ralph. I'm going to select that folder and then I'm going to name the file Ralph and save it. As far as I'm concerned right now, I am finished with XNA Laura. I don't need it anymore unless I screw up the, the mesh to a point that I need to re-export them again. So I can close out of XNA Laura. If I come in here, oops, sorry, wrong one. If I come into my XNA SMD file, I go into Ralph, what I will find is a mesh ASCII file. And this is basically, uh, let's see, what do I want to use? I just want to look at it. So I'll just open up a notepad. All it is, is a bunch of text telling whatever program is going to open it, where everything is. And it can be, it's quite a large file. All it is is vertices and, and skin information and bone information and that kind of thing. So that is pretty much it. And all I have to talk about, about XNA Laura. So with that, I'm going to close this particular session down and move on to part four. So with that, Private Jack out.